It seems to Ms. Learn that of the five officers who were indicted, only one remains in jail. The other four were released on bond. Desmond Mills Jr. is one of those four officers posting his $250,000 bond last night, and he is back home now with his family. So speaking of that officer, I'm joined now by the attorney for Desmond Mills Jr., Blake Ballin. Blake, thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate it. Um, the police chief in an interview just a, a short while ago said that there is no evidence to substantiate the claim of reckless driving. They haven't found any evidence in video or otherwise. Right. What's your reaction to that? Uh, that uh, proof's in the pudding. I need to see it. I haven't seen anything. I haven't seen the video that we're all waiting to see. I haven't seen anything about the stop uh, from a defense standpoint. This is the beginning stages of things, and uh, we are looking forward to seeing what evidence they have. He, the officers had a duty of care. Uh, it was said by the police chief that they did not follow the, the Memphis Police Department guidelines for duty of care. They did not render care. Obviously, there is the, also the kidnapping charge as well. How do you respond to that? Oh, well, specifically focus on that kidnapping charge. And, uh, and of course, having not seen this video, it's difficult for me to talk about the facts, but. To say that uh, you know an, an officer who crosses a line or does something illegal in uh, detaining somebody has committed an aggravated kidnapping is a, a dangerous precedent to set. Why do you say that? Well, every time a Fourth Amendment uh, violation occurs, every time somebody claims they have been wrongfully arrested by a police officer, whether uh, an egregious violation or a slight one, uh, are officers now looking at being charged with an A felony and looking at up to 25 years in jail? It's going to make it difficult for officers to do their jobs. There is the uh, attempted murder charge, or the murder charge, I should say, second degree murder charge. You believe that that is an overcharge and difficult to prove? Why? So that requires uh, that they prove that Mr. Mills acted with a reasonable degree of certainty with regard to uh, his actions, that his actions were certain to cause death. And that's just simply not the case. Uh, when this video comes out, uh, I expect that Mr. Mills will not be delivering blows that cause death. Why do you believe that? Because I've sat down with Mr. Mills. I've looked him in the eye. Uh, I know the kind of person he is. Uh, I've talked with uh, other people who've seen the video. And, and I just don't believe that Mr. Mills is capable of committing that act. What did he tell you about the confrontation? Uh, I cannot tell you what my client has told me. Can you give us an indication of you're saying that you don't believe that he delivered blows? So obviously in your conversations, he told you, I did not deliver blows. He's not the only person I've talked to, you, Don. OK. So you talked to others? I've talked to say? others, and the levels of culpability amongst these five officers are different. And I expect that uh, you're going to see in this video that, that my client, Desmond Mills, uh, is not, in fact, guilty of the crimes he's been charged with. Then why wouldn't he render aid if there were other people who were culpable? And, uh, Go on, sorry. I mean, there are circumstances we don't know about yet, uh, whether Mr. Mills was injured, whether he, uh, there's pepper spray flying in the air, uh, what he was doing while others were acting in, in an unlawful way. I, until I see that video, I can't, I can't say. Speaking to the father of Tyree Nichols, he said there's videotape. The, the tape shows uh, that Tyree was propped up against a wall, handcuffed, that he slumped over, the officers lift him back up and says, you know, some expletives about to sit up or get up. If he's sitting there, why? You, officers couldn't just try to get him to a hospital to get aid to him, to, to the paramedics? I haven't seen any of this. Uh, when I do, I can comment on it. Um, for, for now, I just I cannot answer that without having seen this video. The reason that you believe that there's different levels of culpability is because of the amount of bail? Is that what, what you believe? That's part of it. Part of it is just my discussions with uh, my client, with uh, the district attorney, with the U.S. attorney. I mean, I've, I've been in constant contact with uh, the prosecutors here. So uh, while I haven't seen the video, I know a little bit about uh, what's going on here. And I, I expect there's going to be uh, different levels of action here. And so I caution everyone to, to look at this with an open mind and to treat each of these officers as individuals. As you, you know, under these circumstances, when you have someone who's died and then the, you have the you know, everyone involved, most people involved saying, listen, the videotape is damning. It's going to be hard to get some level of sympathy or empathy um, for your client. You have been saying that you've spoken to his family members and about the history and who Officer Mills is or right. as, a, as a person and was as an officer. Let me say this uh, first, that uh, 
My heart goes out to uh, the Nichols family. Uh, as a defense lawyer, this is an interesting case for me. Uh, I have dedicated my professional life to fighting against injustice in this system, um, to fighting against a system where there is systemic racism for centuries. And to now find myself representing somebody who's a part of that system is an interesting position to be in. But I want to remind everybody that just because Mr. Mills was a part of that system doesn't mean that he can't also be a victim of it. And so it's my job to, to protect him and to protect his rights. Um, and I'm doing that not only because I believe in the system, but because I believe in Mr. Mills. Uh, I've talked to his family, I've talked to his father, I've looked him in the eye, and I've learned the kind of person Desmond Mills is. Uh, he is a good man. There are plenty of bad officers out there. There are plenty of good ones. Uh, the vast majority are good, and I believe Desmond Mills is a good person. Why do you say he's a victim of the system? I, I'm saying he could be a victim of the system, that just because he is a officer, a former officer, because he is part of the system that, that I, as a defense lawyer, spend my career fighting against, doesn't mean that now that he's on the other side, that he couldn't also become a victim of that. And so that's why uh, I and all the other lawyers here are going to vigorously defend our clients. Is he remorseful? You know, he is remorseful that, that he is attached to anything like this, that uh, he is involved or connected to the death of somebody who sh whose life should not have been taken. Uh, that is devastating to him. He's, uh, he must be remorseful that there is someone who died. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, Blake Ballin. Yes, sir. I appreciate Thanks you joining us. Thank you so much.